Hey everybody, Teching here with another SBS Info video. Oh yeah, and I'm really excited for this one. This is going to be fun. Uh, as I'm sure we all know at this point, Volume 87 of the One Piece manga was recently released a few days ago in Japan, which means Oda has subsequently released a new saucy batch of SBS Info for me to take and throw right at your face at like 100 miles an hour or like... I don't know, what is that in kilometers? Like 165 kilometers? I, I don't know, I don't know distance. All right, um, but before we get into that, really quick, just wanted to let you guys a little bit of update on the review, because uh, I mentioned this in a live stream a few days ago, but in case you weren't there for that, um, this weekend I'm just really busy. Uh, actually, today I have to go to work. Like, I have to get this done, and like within an hour, and then I have to rush off to work. I have day shift today, which really sucks, because it's like right in the middle of everything. Um, but I have some days off next week. I have a few days off in a row, so worst case scenario, if I can't get it done this weekend, I'll get it done next next week. So it will, it will get out though. Okay. So, uh, moving on to this SBS, I think it's important that we start with the most, um, the most critical questions, the questions that the fandom really wants to know, like throw it out there. Okay. Uh, usually we save those for the last, what, but th this one was really big. So we just need to get to that right away. So the first question we're going to be tackling is, is it all right if I lick smoothies legs? Um, and Oda just simply responds with that bastard. Um, yeah, you know, um, <sighs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Is it okay to lick smoothies? Like, I don't know if she would be cool with that. You know what's funny? I can't tell if this guy just has a leg fetish and that's his thing, which I've never really understood the people that have a leg fetish. I, I mean, I, you know what I'm about. Like, we all know what I'm about at this point. But, um, never understood the legs being a sexual zone. But I, I, I wonder if he wants to lick her legs because of the fetish or if he wants to lick the legs because her devil fruit ability allows her to, like, you know, juice things. So maybe her body tastes like juice. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. Um, here's a poll if you would like to lick Smoothie's legs today. I'm just going to have that up there just because... I'm having that up there. Okay, so moving on. Uh, here's another question revolving around uh, some type of liquid. Um, okay, so <laughs> this is addressing how... Remember back when Sanji and Luffy were having that epic brawl and Sanji Diablo John by Luffy right in the fucking face and uh, knocked out a tooth? And for, for the next few dozen chapters of the arc when he was in prison and everything, he, he was missing a tooth. And everyone was just kind of bringing it up like, when's he going to get that tooth back? Now... I figured, like, he's gonna go toothless the rest of the arc, and then when he meets Chopper again, when they get to Wano, Chopper's a pretty good doctor, or Law's there, too. I mean, they could make a fake tooth and just pop it into his mouth. Like, Law and Chopper, they could do that, no problem. Um, but no, actually, the way that Oda solves this is when they arrive at Beige's hideout, Brooke, and, Brooke had a little, you know, crack in his skull, and Luffy had the missing tooth. They just drink milk, and their bones just heal magically, like that. Oh, and I'm like, oh, right, yeah. Yeah, because it's manga. So this question is, would it work for any of the Straw Hats? Because we already knew it wouldn't work with Brooke, because Brooke was a skeleton to begin with. But Oda confirms here that, yes, that's right, that it'll fix it. No matter who it is, it'll fix it. And uh, also gives a little note that all you good little kids go to the dentist. Luffy and his crew are strange people. So, yeah, they're... Actually, that would be really cool. That would be a cool superpower to have. I can't... I would really like that, because I hated going to the dentist when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, I had an, an, uh, an older dentist that was, like, when I was, like, up to, up to like, five or six years old. Uh, this older dude was our dentist, and uh, he was really cool, because he would just, like, look at, like, scrape my teeth a little bit, and I'd be like, okay, Matt, you're good. But then he retired, and we had to go to, like, an actual proper dentist's office, which with all the fucking fancy machinery and everything, and I'm like, oh, well, this isn't so bad. Oh, my God! You know, so, yeah, I would have really killed to have the milk power back then. Still not a huge fan of the dentist till today, but I can deal. All right, so moving on, this is a question about the Vin Smokes, uh, and this is addressing the hair color thing, okay? So, um, I remember back before the color had come to light, uh, like Tonka Bong covers and the anime and everything, people all, all just assumed that all of Sanji's brothers and sisters were going to have blonde hair, like Sanji. Uh, but then it was revealed that, you know, Ichiji has red hair, Niji blue, Yonji green, and Reiju uh, pink. And then we see uh, Sanji, who has yellow hair, along with Judge and Sora, who are his, their, their parents, also have yellow hair. So it's like, what's the deal there? Do they dye their hair to suit their color scheme? Like, because Ichiji is sparking red, does he dye his hair red just to go with the, the theme? Um, but Oda states, it's really simple. Uh, because they modified their lineage factors, or their genetics, essentially, that's what results in their hair color being slightly different. Um, so I guess, you know, ever since birth.
Earth. Raju had, you know, the, the, the skills of the poison pink, therefore her hair was pink. Um, also, I think just from a marketing and just from a writing standpoint, it's e in the anime, it's easier just to distinguish each one of the, of the Vinsmoke siblings if they have different hair colors. And they're obviously going for, like, a, a common rider, you know, uh, Super Sentai kind of feel with the, the Vinsmoke family and the Germa Double Six, so that only makes sense why they would have different, you know, hair color. Um, but yeah, it's different genetics, and because Sanji was immune to this treatment, um, that means that his hair color, it's like, it's like he's Sora and Judge's own son, without any sort of genetic modifications, he's just their normal son. So that's why he has the same hair color as Judge and Sora do. So, there you go, and answer to that. Next up is a question about our favorite, favorite three-eyed maniac, uh, Pudding. I know Pudding's true form, but I still love her. And Oda's response to this is freaking key. It's just, you're going down an evil path, my friend. <laughs> Men are sad things. Yes, we are! We are very sad things. <laughs> if you have the hots for Pudding, even knowing how she acts... Here's a poll up here for your pleasure. Okay, moving on. Uh, oh, Baron Tamago. Okay, this is one that I put in here just because it validates shit that I said already. And you know I gotta co-op that. Alright, so with Baron Tamago, the question is, you know, how exactly does the Tama Tama no Mi work? He doesn't actually go in to explain whether it's a zone or a paramecia, which I would have enjoyed if Oda would have left that little hint there. Pretty sure it's a paramecia, but, you know, Oda confirming that would have been great. No, he's just simply asking, you know... Okay, he's Baron Tamago, he gets defeated, he goes into Viscount Chick. If Viscount Chick gets defeated, he turns into the Duke Chicken, or, the, you know, whatever. Uh, Count Niwatari, because Niwatari means chicken in Japanese. So, what happens when the Count is defeated? Does he go back to being a Baron, or how does that work? And uh, Oda confirms that, yeah, that's that's basically how it goes. For anyone that doesn't understand, it goes Baron, and then the Viscount Chick, and then the Count Niwatari, and then goes back to the Baron Tamago, and continue. That's the reference, that's the joke, you know what came first, the chicken or the egg. Even though when I did my video, we've pretty much already cemented which came first, the chicken or the egg. Uh, well, it depends what you're talking about. If you're talking about a chicken egg, um, it's different, but, you know, just in terms of eggs in general, they've been around, like, dinosaurs laid eggs long before chickens. Um, you know, and then you have the whole thing with the jungle fowl. Uh, but basically what happened was that a non-chicken you know, laid an egg that became a chicken. At some point throughout evolutionary history, this occurred. So there you go. However you want to take that. All right, so uh, that's answering the Tamago shit. Moving on to, uh, oh, a little bit more information about the uh, Charlotte family. We got a lot of that in this one. So uh, this is something basically really quick. He's talking about how um, the three triplets, we had Katakuri, the second son, Daifuku, the third son, and Oven, the fourth son, are all triplets. They were all born at the same time. Along with that, he also goes to explain that Katakuri is the minister of flour on uh, Wheat Island or Komogi Island. Uh, Daifuku is the minister of beans from uh, Pori Pori Island, a Mame Mame town, and Charlotte Oven is the minister of browned food, kind of breaking the scheme there, but all right, whatever, I'll go with the fantasy, from Yakigashi Island from Fukura town. So that that's really just going to explain a little bit more about these three siblings and how, like, they're the strongest. Now, Pero Sparrow is the first son, uh, minister of candy, but remember, Pero Sparrow's kind of getting on in years. He's a little bit older, so maybe his peak, you know, fighting, you know, age has, you know, passed him, and it really comes down to those three. It really comes down to Katakuri, who is stated to be the strongest, and then Daifuku, who we don't really know a lot about, he has, like, that genie devil fruit where he, like, rubs his tummy, and then the genie comes out with, like, the halbred and, like, attacked Pedro or whatever. Um, and then we have Minister of Brown Food Oven, who just showed up at uh, Coca Ca Cacao Island, uh, Chocolate Town, and he was, like, kind of berating pu uh, Pound, uh, you know, uh, Chiffon and Lola's dad. And it's very possible that perhaps Sanji's gonna come out after baking the cake and fight against Oven, and then we're gonna see a battle there between Heat and Heat. So th that'll be cool as well. But that's, like, the prime, like like the top apex fighting force of the Big Mom family um, outside of Big Mom herself. We also get some other information that Charlotte Amande is in fact a member of the family. So we didn't know Amande was a member of the family. We just knew that she was a member of the pirate crew because not everybody in the crew is a member of the family. There's like 85 something children in the Big Mom family um, and then like 25 husbands that nobody talks about except Pound, uh, which even with Pound nobody really talks about. Um, but we have characters like Bobbin and Peckoms and Baron Tamago who are 
are not members of the Charlotte family, so we didn't really know where Amande fit in. But yes, Amande is in fact a member of the Charlotte family, and she is a half snake neck, half human hybrid. So that that makes sense there. Um, so uh, moving on, we have something about uh, oh yeah, the big one, Shanks. Okay, this was a really cool one. Not a lot of information, but just a little bit to make us kind of wet our appetites. And this is fun. Somebody simply asks, hey. What's the name of red-haired Shang's sword? Come on, Oda. You don't you don't have to give us his ability. You don't have to tell us how awesome he is. Can you just give us something about Shanks, all right? Because we haven't seen the dude in, like, forever. So, Oda relents and says, Right, yes, it's called Griffon. Uh, Shanks appeared in the first episode, but I had no clue how he was gonna fight, you know? <laughs> I love that. I love that. So part of the reason why Shanks was such a mystery for the most of the story, like, what does he even do? We still don't really know how he does anything. Like, I mean, we know he sword fights, but that's like it. I'm sure he's got other shit up his his bag of tricks. But yeah, the name of his sword is Griffon, which, uh, or Griffin, however you want to say it. Uh, and it, you know, it makes sense. I always picture Griffin's yellow whenever I would imagine a Griffin, but I guess they could be red and that goes along with his red hair title and all that stuff. Uh, his sword itself doesn't really seem all that special. It's just like a saber that has like a handguard. I mean, it's a big sword, but it doesn't seem like anything super amazing, but, um, it's probably going to be like, uh, like the higher grade, like the Supreme Wazamono is like in the same class as Mihawk. I would assume it probably would be. So, uh, yeah, that's SBS 87. I mean, there's other stuff included, but for the most part, that's everything I really wanted to address here right now. Uh, just really quick for everybody. So what did you guys think? What did you guys think about the name of Shanks' sword? How a duel between Shanks and Mihawk would play out? Um, what do you think about Tamago's Devil Fruit ability? Or the Vince Smoke genetic factor? Or if you would if you would either lick Smoothie's legs or bang pudding in her current state? Like, which one would you go with? Um, the, 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 the triplets in the Big Mom family? Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention with the Big Mom family is that... Um, it's been stated multiple times that Big Mom gives birth to, like, a kid every single year. Like, that's her thing. Like, she's had to. She has over, like, 85 kids. Sometimes she gives birth to kids more than once, like, with the triplets. Uh, Opera and his siblings were, like, um, quintuplets. So they were all born at, like, the same time. Um, but, uh, for the most part, she gives birth once every year. Here's the question. Has she given birth this year yet? Or is she pregnant right now? I mean, it, being pregnant for Big Mom probably doesn't hamper her physical skill. I'm just saying, you know, at the end of the arc, is a after the Straw Hats escape and after she's been satiated with her wedding cake, are we going to find out, like, she gave birth to another kid? And she's like, you, you're you going to grow up with an intense hatred for the Straw Hats, my boy or my girl or whatever. I, I don't know. I'm just, I just want to present that to you here. Because um, the youngest member of the Charlotte family that we've seen so far Outside of, uh, outside of, like, BJ's, you know, son, because that's not really Big Mom's, that's, that's, like, a grandson, so, um, I, I, like, uh, I think it's that little girl that we saw with the balloon, I forget her name, like, Anna, or Annie, or something, that was her name, that had a balloon or whatever, and she was talking to Big Mom, but I think that was the youngest we've seen so far. Uh, but I just wanted to address that as well. But anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching the video. I gotta hurry up and edit this and get going. Uh, but uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe and like and watch all these extra videos. And I will try to get the review out as quickly as humanly possible. Thanks, you guys, for putting up with me. Signing out. Later.